Theresoever, whosoever. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And then chapter 12. Verse 50. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my sister, is my brother, and my sister, and mother. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. And then chapter 14, verse 24. He that loveth me, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. I'd like to preach tonight, just a few minutes if I could, on our faith being activated. You know what something means to be activated? Right. If you get a, a new bank card and uh, they send it to you in the mail, it's worthless until you call and have it activated. Right. Amen. And uh, we've got to have our faith activated. Right. Right. We can have faith, but if we don't put that faith in action, right. then what, what, what is it to us then? Right. We can have all kinds of faith. I've heard people that are sinners say, I have faith. But do they really have faith right. if they're not putting that faith in action? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Kathy was talking about the faith chapter, and I was wondering if I was on target at all tonight. But uh, 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 since the Lord laid this on my heart yesterday, and uh, but... Uh, I feel like I am after she said what she did, talking about those faithful worthies in right. Hebrews chapter 11. And then she said, we also, uh, we can also have that faith. Right. I believe we can. Yeah. Come on. I believe we can. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. We, but the problem is when we talk about faith, we put it way out here. And they well, one day I'll get to it. Come on. But it's not that hard to reach, church. Right. If we believe God. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Well, amen. Come on. Amen. And then we'll have uh, an idea that we'd like to have a gift. And the Bible tells us to seek for the best gift, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Amen. But we'll place that gift way out there and, and in the future somewhere. And God wants us to have it now. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 So faith is obedience. That's what Jesus, or the scriptures I was talk, reading about here in my text, was about obedience. Yes. So faith being activated, right. we're going to obey God. Come on. Right. Hallelujah. If we don't obey God, amen, then we're not activating our faith. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ was obedient. He was obedient unto death, the scripture said. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell us, I didn't mean to get into this, but it's just my opinion on this. Jesus was already in heaven. Well, we read that. That's not opinion. That's the Bible. Right. He was already in heaven. But this is where my opinion comes in at. When he came down here in the human flesh to live, God in the flesh... He didn't remember heaven. He was just a baby. He didn't remember ever being there. Amen. But God was with him. And he prospered all during his childhood days. 
And somewhere along the line, faith was instilled in Christ where he never, ever, ever disobeyed God. Right. Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody might say, well, that was easy because he's the son of God. But remember, I don't believe that he ever remembered heaven because he had to grow up just like a baby. Amen. He had to learn it as he went along. Right. Praise God. Abraham was obedient. Amen. And it, by Abraham being obedient, it was counted to him as righteousness. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hundreds of years later, Abraham's descendants, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 16 said, his descendants could not come into the inheritance because of their unbelief. Right. When, they, uh, when they failed to believe, amen, then they, uh, they just lost their faith. That's what happened. Right. When they failed to believe, they lost their faith. They just simply would not cross Jordan and go over into Canaan, amen, because they failed to believe. They would not be obedient. Now you just look at what this disobedience cost them. It cost them 40 years of wandering around and around in the wilderness until an entire generation died off and a new generation went in to possess the land. Right. Hallelujah. Can you help me preach here a few minutes? Hallelujah. Well, I'd like to preach if the Lord would help me here. Hallelujah. I'm talking about faith now. Faith being activated. Do you realize the devil has faith? The scripture said that the devils believe and they tremble. Now, when you look up that word tremble, it means to bristle and shudder. Amen. They bristle at the fact that they've lost the battle and they shudder over the fact of where they're going. Amen. At the end time. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Even though they have faith, it's not activated. Their faith is dead because they do not obey. I'm about to feel the preacher coming by here tonight. Amen. If we will obey God, amen, and activate our faith, then we'll have a live faith. But if we fail to obey God, then we have a dead faith. Can you help me preach? Amen. We're no better off than the devil if we don't obey God. Come on. Now I'm telling you that's kind of straight, but that's just the way it is. God expects us to be obedient. Now I'm not telling you I've been obedient every time. You know I haven't, and I know you haven't. Amen. Hallelujah. But the, the, point, the thrust of my message is tonight is for us to come up to a higher level. Right. Amen. If we know our faith is to be activated, then, they, then, then we just simply need to activate our faith. Right. I was talking to the brothers back here in the office earlier this evening, and the devil just about had me write my obituary. Amen. I was sitting in church Monday night a week ago sitting there and I couldn't get into anything that was hardly going on around me knowing that I had just had the blood work done and I wouldn't receive the results on it until the next day and I was sitting there and the devil telling me when you get those results back then you're going to see those numbers way high. Amen. And when they get way high you're going to have to get up and admit that you've got something dreadfully wrong with you. Amen. Perhaps cancer or something. And, and, and I just kept kept trying to resist that. But I will tell you, he can badger our minds long enough. And if we'll allow him to do it long enough, amen, that he will rob us of every bit of our faith. Right. But I just kept going back and trying to remember, trying to remember, being prayed for here being prayed for in other places and feeling the presence of God and feel that touch from heaven. Amen. And I kept resisting that. And I got good news the next day. Aren't you glad we're serving a God that can deliver us? But we've got to activate that faith. we got to believe God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Son. Of God. And yeah. Jesus was obedient. We mentioned that a minute ago. 
Amen. And Jesus was the pattern son. Right, right. Now, if you've ever done any carpenter work or anything, then you've got usually got to fix you a pattern. Right. Amen. And you don't want to get the pattern mixed up. Cut one. And then cut one off of that. And then don't mark the pattern and use it. Yeah. And then you come back and use the one you just cut. And then you cut eight or ten of them and you're going to have either too long or too short. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, 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 if you're putting up rafters, then you've got to fix the first two that will fit. And then you've got to mark pattern on one of them and cut every one of them to match it. All right. Jesus was the pattern son. Right. Hallelujah. Well, I feel the glory of God. He was the pattern. Yeah. He was the pattern that came here and showed us what God was like. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not only did He show us what God was like, amen, He showed us how that we should please God by being obedient to the Father. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. He demonstrated what God is. And on the human side, He demonstrated all that God intends for us to be. He demonstrated that. Hallelujah. Well, I can't live up to that measure. Hallelujah. God never expected you to by yourself. He never expected you to live up to that measure by yourself. That's the reason He said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He knew we couldn't do it by ourselves. He knew that if we got the Holy Ghost and it dwelling on the inside of us, amen, we would have that pattern, amen, to be able to be obedient to the Father. Glory to God. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Matthew 4 and 1 says Jesus was led up of the Spirit. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned to Jordan and was led of the Spirit. All right. Come on. Yeah. He activated his faith. Right. Right. Hallelujah. But the Spirit lead him. And that don't leave us out then. Romans 8 14 said, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Right. So he was a pattern. He was led by the Spirit. I believe Mark said that he was one time driven by the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That just hit me. I forgot to look that one up. Amen. But he was led, and then he Paul said that we are led because we are the sons of God. Right. Amen. If we are the sons of God, we're going to be led by the Spirit of God. Right. We're going to follow the pattern. Right. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Right. Well, I hope right. I'm preaching something to you that helps you. Oh, yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. This leadership of the Holy Ghost then is the kingdom that God told us to seek first. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek the kingdom of God. How are we going to get the kingdom of God? Is have the Holy Ghost in our life. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. I, now I come from a from a circle, and uh, the circle I come from preached that if you didn't speak in other tongues, you wasn't saved yet. Yep. Now I'm not going to say that, but I know I got saved by the blood. Don't right. you? Right. Hallelujah. Know that it did. Right. But also know just because I got saved by the blood, amen, that that didn't, that, that didn't give me license to stop right. and not go any further. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And just because I spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance and got baptized with the Holy Ghost, that didn't give me license to stop either. Right. I got what I needed to activate my faith. Right. Hallelujah. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got what you needed to activate your faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. God, would you help us here? Praise the Lamb of God. Psalms 37 and 11 said, The meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. So the meek are the disciplined, the tamed, and the controlled. Help me preach. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Come on. Now, I didn't mean that we're be controlled by somebody. Right. 
A preacher is not to control the people. Right. It's not his job. No. I know it's you're God. listening to me. Go ahead, preach. But it's God. not the preacher's job to control the people. No. That's one of the biggest problems that we've had over the years in the holiness movement in particular has that we want to corral the church congregation and control them. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you get that way, you've got a cultish spirit. And then you'll have a preacher that will rise and think high more higher than of himself than he ought to think. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's got control that he weighs in over people with. And that's not what God meant. No. Amen. For people to be meek. Amen. To be, uh, to be, uh, 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 well, let me go back to it again. Discipline. Tamed and controlled. We've got all power and all wisdom and all knowledge will come to the person. I hope you're getting what I'm talking Go about. Tonight. Come on all power, all wisdom, and all knowledge will come to the persons that are hardest tamed and controlled by God. All right. But as long as we're bucking rank. Hey Amen. As long as we're saying, God, that's all right. I'll handle this one my way and pick you up somewhere down the road. It simply will not work. All We've right. got to be harnessed, tamed, and controlled by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's the reason you find some folks that live a real tight, close, holding this life. Then that's the reason you'll find some folks that are just about as loose as a goose. Hey Amen. It's because some folks are not harnessed and controlled and disciplined. Can somebody help me preach? Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. God called Israel's disobedience unbelief. Now, we look at Canaan oftentimes as a picture of heaven. Crossing over Jordan into Canaan's fair land. And we sing it like that. And, 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 and we look at it as, as our on our part. Going to Canaan, going into heaven. Amen. But you stop to look at the scripture and you'll find that it's not necessarily meaning that. Right. Amen. Canaan was a type of the believers walk in the spirit. Right. Yeah, they were walking with God. Right. And then walked right up to Jordan and would not go in. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you helping me here? And I'll say it again. Seek first the kingdom of, right, of God and His righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Yeah. So obedience is a work of faith. Yeah. Not all the time do we understand why we are obeying God. All right. That's right. Not all the time can I explain why I do things. That's right. I try to explain it just a little here and a little there and blunder terribly. Amen. But not all the time can I explain why I do things. Why I go where I go in particular. Now stay with me, folks. I've got no axe to grind, no stones to throw tonight. I, I hope I don't any time. Amen. But it's difficult to explain because I'm walking by faith. I'm walking in obedience to what I can feel God is desiring me to do. And I'm taking these steps by faith. Don't understand it. Amen. Every now and then, God will allow me uh, to see just a little bit and see some things happen that He showed me. And then that, that assures me that I'm where I need to be. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. But I don't always know. Neither do you. That's the reason obedience is the work of faith. Hallelujah. But if we don't have any faith, we're not going to have any action. All right. All right. God will do as I do. God will do as you do. Oh, you're listening to me. Maybe I'm lost or something. No, hallelujah. 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 Well, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we receive a miracle, before we ever receive a miracle, do you realize there's instructions to follow? Hallelujah. So to obey the instructions is faith. 
Now, sometimes I have problems with instructions. Do you ever buy something that had to be put together and decide you could do it without the instructions? I have literally ruined things trying to put them together without the instructions. Only to put out the instructions and as the saying is, put the cart before the horse. The problem was, I couldn't unhook it. It was made to go together and stay. Come on now. I remember one time putting a wagon together. And I had the little spindle, you know, the little axle. And I put the wheel on and put that cap on it and I drove that cap down on there. Yeah. But I didn't have everything in the right place. And so I messed it up. And forever, as long as that wagon lasted those children, I always had a problem wheel running off. Are you helping me here? That's what happens if we don't follow the instructions. Right. If we don't follow the instructions, we're not going to heaven. Right. Come on. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I'm not going to get into what the argument was, but a preacher that I know of, <laughs> amen, told one of his men in his church, he said, you can go ahead and do what you think you want to do. You can go ahead and do it. But he said, and you can come to church here after you do it. But no one's going to have any confidence in you. Well, that made him mad. He bristled. He said, well, I don't read it like that. Go ahead and read it any way we want to. But it's still the instructions. Right. And if you don't follow them, we're not getting to heaven. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Well, glory to God. Praise the Lamb of God. I'm talking about following instructions. The Hebrew children wanted God to intervene whenever they wouldn't bow down. Amen. They would not bow down. They would not bow down to the king's image. They just simply wasn't going to. And they wanted God to intervene. But do you realize the scripture already said in the Ten Commandments that the Jewish people got, that the Hebrews got, that Moses got on the mountain, brought it down to them. The Hebrew, that, that, that Ten Commandments said, Thou shalt not have no other gods before you. All right. They believed that. Yeah. They believed that with all of their heart. All right. yeah. Hallelujah. But they had to make a decision to activate their faith. All right. I know this is simple preaching, but it's what I've got on my heart tonight. They had to make that decision to activate that faith. Right. Amen. And when they did not bow, whoo, hallelujah, they put that faith in action. Right. Amen. If God don't, I'm still going to heaven. Right. But if he does, I'm coming out shouting. Right. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. And when they did not bow, God honored that faith and sent his son right in the fire with them. think we got the message. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Now the rich young ruler come to Jesus Hallelujah. and he wanted to know what it took to inherit eternal life. Right. Jesus saw this man having a heart full of covetousness. Yeah. Until he had his mind on what he could get. Yeah. How much he could get for himself. And I wonder how much he spent on hobbies sure. oh, God. that he never gave to the work of God. Right. People do that today. Yes. You realize that? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. But this young ruler turned away sorrowful. Yeah. Sorrowful. Yes, Jesus just simply told him to sell what you have and give it to the poor. Yeah. And follow me. Mm -hmm. He turned away. He made a decision not to activate his faith. All right. yeah. 
Does everybody have to sell everything they've got and, and, and to be able to go to heaven? No, they don't. God knows what's in our hearts. Right. He knows if we've got anything at all and we're using it for the kingdom of God and our hearts are not filled with covetous brother Bill. Right. Amen. Then, then, then he's going to he's going to help us. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to help us to gain more because we're doing more for his kingdom. Right. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise God. But I've said this before in time past. Jesus didn't run after him when he turned away sorrowful. I'm going to close here pretty quick. Jesus did not run after him and try to negotiate with him. No, he didn't. He did not take off after him and say, now come back here now. We can work something out. Surely we can work something out. Jesus did not do that. He told him what was in his heart and he chose to keep that in his heart rather than activate his faith and follow Jesus. I've said this. We've talked about this in Sunday school class in time past. I've talked about this. Amen. And, and I wonder, I wonder what God would have done for him if he'd have just pushed it all back. Right. You're thinking about that? Uh -huh. What God might have actually done for him? Right. He just sold it all, distributed it to the poor. I'm telling what God would have prospered that man. Right. Hallelujah. And closing tonight, James chapter 2, verse 18. James said, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have work, show me thy faith. Without thy works, I will show thee my faith. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith. Without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. We've already talked about that. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Ye oh, see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Hallelujah. Yes. Do we need a miracle? Oh, yes. I wonder if by raising of hands tonight somebody would declare, I need a miracle. Yeah. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Sure we need a miracle. Yes, Lord. Amen. Then we need to obey God. Right. We need to obey God as much as we know how to obey God. Right. I look at where I am now. And I look at where I've come from and I realize if I had just understood how to activate my faith, I could have been way on down the road further than what I am now. Come on. Surely. Come on. This is not so deep we can't understand it or so shallow that we get bored. As bad as we need God, That's right. and as great as we need a miracle, yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we can activate our faith. Do you realize tonight pulling our loved ones back out of sin that's wandered into it is an absolute miracle? Right. Right. Amen. An absolute miracle. Do you realize that grabbing somebody and pulling them out of the fire that don't know anything about this way is an absolute miracle? That's right. Hallelujah. I feel God now. It's a miracle.
miracle. Amen. If we've got a miracle and we desire a miracle, let's exercise our faith. You need the Holy Ghost tonight. Let's obey God. Hallelujah. We need healing. Let's obey God. Oh, it's so hard to obey God. It's so difficult sometimes to obey God. Hallelujah. It's so difficult to obey God. It shouldn't be, but it is. Because we're looking at the circumstances. And the devil's saying, all right, buddy, this is reality. You are looking at reality. And Brother David, what we're desiring is on past reality. Right. It cannot happen. Right. That's what the devil says. That's right. It right. can't happen. That's right. But it can happen. Right. Oh, I've had things in God's hands and got things in God's hands now. But things that I've had in God's hand in the past, I've had the devil say it's impossible, but God moved. Right, yes. <coughs> Lord, yes, Lord, yes. I've used this till I wore it out. But it's something Brother Doug Webb told me whenever he preached our homecoming here a few years back. And he had the privilege to go to India. Because I'm saying I've used this and probably use it again. I could not understand why these heathens <coughs> could get such a move of God. And we couldn't, can't hardly get a move of God. I just couldn't hardly understand it. Just could not understand it. And I really felt like that some of these people coming back from missions trip was highly overrating and exaggerating some of the things that they would say. Because I've been here all of my life. I've been around Pentecost all of my life. I understand what holiness and separation from the world is. I understand what it means. Yes. Amen. I just couldn't understand why we couldn't get it. And I told Brother Doug that. I said, Brother Doug, I just don't understand. First thing, he said, Brother Sparks, you need to go on a mission trip a time or two. Well, perhaps I do. But what little money I got, I just go ahead and send it to them and try to save up. Three or four thousand dollars to go. They need the money worse than I felt like I need to go, so I probably never will. But anyway, anyway, he told me about going to India and getting up on that rooftop. Don't get too bored with me telling this come on, again. Come on. Getting up on that rooftop to preach to those people because if they stayed down in the streets, somebody would have stoned them. And so they got up on the rooftop, and he said he stood there. With his Bible open in his hand and said, This is God's Word. Yeah. This is God's written Word. Yeah. Told him how God brought the Word down to man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he said, That I'm God's representative. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what this Word says. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. He told them they could be saved, and he told them they could be healed. And after he preached that to them, he said, buddy, they covered up front to be prayed for. And he said, brother, you'd have to be there to have seen what I saw. He said, don't feel hard at me for telling you this. But he said, I looked at them and their condition. And he said, I wondered if God would. But because they activated their faith right. in God's word, he said, God did it. He said, God healed things to people that I've never seen before. And he had never seen it like that since. Because these people wanted a miracle and they believed God. Oh, God, help me tonight to believe God for my miracle. Yes, Lord. God has shown me some things that he wants me to do. And I write my obituary. While the devil's working on my mind, and I've already been told in the spirit that there's much work to do. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Yes, much work to do. So I tried to narrow it down then 
and say, okay, Lord, by the time I've got my foot here, until I get over here to the grave, I'll do just as much as I possibly can. Well, that, I can do that also. Right. But in between time, God's got a lot of things to be done, and a lot of people don't have faith. Hey, Amen. I lack the faith that I really need to have, and so this is going to cross my shoes tonight too. This ain't the first time I've preached on faith. And Brother Steve says sometimes, this ain't my first rodeo. I've seen the presence of God move. I've seen people healed. I've seen the power of God fall in a mighty way. Preacher, preach something else on Wednesday night. This is what God gave me. Activate your faith. Say it. That's right. Heard a fellow say, somewhere, I don't remember, it might have been right here. I don't know, brother. Could have said it here last Wednesday night. I don't remember. Talked about how long it took you to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, I've been in church all of my life. But I really made up my mind in December 1972 that I was going to hang on to God. Now, I've said this before. I've not been on the mountaintop by a long shot. But I haven't given up either. All that time in December 1972, up until now, I haven't given up. But it took me from December 1972 until May in 1980 to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I just didn't understand how to activate my faith. Brother Lonnie Perky was a peculiar fellow. He was a peculiar fellow. But let me tell you something, he was on to something. He was on to something. I didn't get the Holy Ghost under right under his hand, but he was having revival at Lower Red Lick. And I'm telling you, we had revival. Yes. And then I went on home to receive the baptism. Yeah. Amen. That man was on to something. Yeah. In, in that particular movement, more people got the Holy Ghost under his ministry than anybody that I know of. Yeah. I know there's other preachers that, that, that uh, in the movement that we pretty much participate in now. Uh, there's preachers that, that you know, got the gift of preaching and people get the faith and come on and receive the Holy Ghost. But Brother Lonnie was on to that. I remember, I'm trying to hush, I remember going to Doe Creek one night and they were, I had them there in revival and because of his peculiarities, they shut out the message. They shut it out. I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to have it. I'm talking about the older folks that have been there when I got there. Shut her out when you're going to have it. One young lady come to the altar and I'm telling you she was getting close to God. Yes. I don't remember if she got the Holy Ghost that night or not. She did get the Holy Ghost. Amen. But Sister Perky was there praying for her and she was getting tired. Her legs was getting tired. So Sister Perky and their peculiar ways of doing things just got a hold of her brother David and went ahead and laid her back in the floor where she could have get some circulation to her legs and get prayed, prayed on through. And after a while she got up speaking in tongues, running around the church. I got it. I remember that now. Telling everybody she got it. But her grandmother sitting over there red faced and turned purple. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. Amen. And that young lady is backslid on God today and doing terrible things. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you just simply can't pass judgment on something right. until you know for sure what's going on. Right. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Mitchell's told it before. Amen. He'd get close to the Holy Ghost over here in this other building and get to feel it all over him. And we had him over there in revival. And then and, and in the meantime... He'd get to feeling it, and he'd jump up and shout, dance, you know. And that night, he got ready to jump up and dance when I got telling it like it is. Hey, man, she got him hold the arm, and she said, hang on here, son. She said, if you'll hang on here just long enough to worship the Lord and get through the Holy Ghost, then you can dance all night long. Hallelujah, it wasn't long. And he come out of there speaking in other tongues. Somebody had to help him activate his flame. Well, glory to God. That's what I'm trying to do tonight yes. to help us activate All right. our faith All right. in the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, well, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hope I can word you tonight. 
But yesterday, troubled in mind, troubled in mind and spirit, troubled in mind and spirit. I come out here and I pray a while. And I go in there and I sit down. I don't remember how long I was out here. From the time I got in from work till the time I went on to church last night. Stayed out here seeking God for this service tonight and this message tonight. Hallelujah. I just simply don't want to be defeated. Right. I don't want to be defeated. Do you want to be defeated? No. I want to have faith in God. No, 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 I'll tell you again. I struggle with my faith. I struggle with my faith. Sure I do. But I'm telling you, God wants us to stop struggling with our faith and start believing when God tells us something, believe it just like it is and grab hold of it. Right. Well, I know Smith Wigglesworth has been quoted and used by the Charismatics probably more than anybody because of his peculiarities. Amen. I may not be telling this just exactly like it is, but I think I read it something like this. He raised a dead man up in the bed, a dead body, remember, or the man or a woman, and demanded them to speak to him, and they spoke and come back alive. Yeah. Yeah. Peculiar. Beautiful. Yeah. That's where these uh, charismatics get this name and claim it. You know? yeah. Now he just didn't do that till he felt the unction of the Holy Ghost. Right. And when he felt the unction of the Holy Ghost, he did that. Right. Somebody else had something wrong on the inside of them, probably cancer, and he walked up and took his fist yeah. and come back and laid it on them. And the Lord healed him immediately. Yep. Brothers, please be in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise yes. God. Hallelujah. But he was a peculiar fellow. Yes. Amen. Sometimes those of us that activate our faith get to act in a little odd sometimes. Yep. Right. And folks can't only really understand it. Don't you realize that we're civilized? Amen. That we're, we're just normal people. And we don't believe in getting all bent out of shape like that. I don't care if they call me Holy Roller. 